So I've been playing around with the flint motor some more and I took the uh, mini flint motor that I've made and um, really I thought it wasn't very good so I remade a few of the parts and, and this is what I've come up with. Okay, so I took the two black coils off and rewound them with some really thin gauge wire. I don't quite know what gauge it is. I got it from a, um, a fan motor where there was just loads of wire on a coil and I used that. I also don't know how many winds I've put on it. I just kept going until it was full. The whole point of this really is that it's a, a test piece just to see if we're getting something out of it. So anyway, I rewound the coils, as you can see, with two much larger coils here, rather than more turns of wire on them. And I remade the pins here and put the same kind of same wire on them. Now these ones are wired in parallel, and they take their input from these two leads here. So, oh sorry, wrong side, uh, these two leads here. So essentially just put these in an oscillating circuit and it oscillates a current through here, these two. And the whole idea of this was to see if we got something out. And these, these two wires here uh, are connected to here and here, which are wired in series. And sure enough, we put about 12 volts in here, we get about 100 millivolts out of here. Now that's not really impressive, but um, it is interesting that it does that. The fact that um, the switching flux through here will drive um, a current through here. So what we're interested in now really is making something that's much more um, controlled, so we can take some controlled measurements out of it. Really this is just a practice piece, just to see if we got something. Uh, and sure enough, we get something. So the next thing I'm going to do really is um, either again dismember this and put a, a counted number of turns on it, or what I'm more likely to do is get a few shaded pole motors like go to look and um, build a new device out of those with a um, a controlled wire and controlled coil. I could also model it and I am thinking about that. Um, maybe we'll do a model of that and see what the mathematics say on it. But that's what I've done with it. I mounted it on the board, remade the coils, um, put a test voltage in uh, at a, I think it was about 50 kilohertz. Anyway, test voltage in at a certain frequency and see what we got out and we got about 100 millivolts, so 150 millivolts out of there. Now the circuit I'm using I found in um, Patrick Kelly's book. I love Patrick Kelly. That guy has collected a lot of this stuff together in a um, ebook that's freely available for download. And there's some very, very interesting circuits in that per se. But this is the one that we're actually using at the moment. Uh, can you help me? Hopefully, you can see that. Yeah, that looks good. And in the centre of it, you can see the um, Flynn device there that I've been testing out. And um, there's a concurrent oscillation circuit, which is basically just a Meissner circuit. And then the output is put through um, a diode bridge, rectifier bridge, uh, across a smoothing capacitor to draw off, uh, according to him, 12 volts. God knows if that works. And what we do know, as I say, is that if we put a current in here, we get a current out of here. Okay, and that in itself is interesting. So what I want to do now, as I said, is play with that a little bit in a bit more of a controlled way and spend a bit more money on it really and build a model of it that's going to be um, more testable than this sort of ad hoc version that I've got here. But the reason to run up an ad hoc is it doesn't take much time, it doesn't cost very much, and it does tell you whether the idea is going to work. Uh, and certainly you get some kind of current out of that. So, um, interesting little device, and I think I'm going to work a bit more on this. Anyway, the instruction videos are prior to this, so if you fancy reproducing what I'm doing, go right ahead, it seems to work.